and welcome to our time. He's an Australian event award winner for best achievement in entertainment and he's produced specialised events for casino and even a very long association with the Royal Adelaide Show. So welcome, Shane Wilson. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Da, 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 da. Pleased to be here. You almost need a fanfare. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because you've done so much in your life. And we're going to show everybody just a, a few glimpses of stuff you've done. Okay. But... Um, we were just joking before when you said you're not going to talk about the baton twirling. Yes, I am. Oh, he brings it up right at the start. So I first met you auditioning for a dance show to go overseas. Yes. And, my, and I was looking down from my office, from a window in my office, and I saw you downstairs. How did you start baton twirling? <laughs> We've all got to start somewhere. Yeah, we do. Um, well, I went to Mitchell Park High School, which was a musical school at that stage, and I was in the band... And separate to the band, there was a group of all-female baton twirlers. And uh, you're not? No, I'm not a female. No. <laughs> um, so uh, I had a couple of girls there who taught me how to twirl. And surprisingly <laughs> enough... Um, That's I, funny, taught me how to twirl, yeah. yes. Surprisingly enough, I found that I was exceptionally good at it. You were? And... Um, so one thing led to another and um, some people came out to Australia uh, from the States and they wanted me to compete in America. But there was a problem that I had to have won an Australian competition to be able to do that. And so they convinced me to go into the Australian Championships and I actually won. Um, and there was very few uh, guys in the championships, as you can imagine, because it's a female orientated sport. Yeah, it's nothing like being unique. Yeah, got a lot of ribbing at school for all of that, but sure um, it was very worthwhile. And it, um, you know, being an Australian champion was fantastic. And I went on to teach it um, in Japan and Hong Kong and America as well. So it was worthwhile being ribbed at school. Oh, of course. Well, uh, like I said, we've all got to start somewhere. Exactly. And any introduction into the entertainment industry is interesting because everybody goes through some form of introduction. But we connected quite a long time ago when you were looking after all the events at the Adelaide Casino. Yeah, that's correct. I um, was kind of headhunted out of newspaper industry um, for a job that was at the casino and I didn't think I'd get it and I was quite... Um, upset at the time because I'd applied for promotions manager at ANSET um, okay. and I didn't get it. And, that was lucky. Um, yeah, it turned out that, you know, fate closed one door because yes. ANSET went under and I ended up at the casino. So I was in a junior role there to start with, but then I became promotions manager and then marketing services manager. And my role was quite huge. It um, involved looking after all of the promotional activity for every aspect of the casino. So this is the Adelaide beach. Casino. Yes. When it was the Adelaide Casino. When it was the Adelaide Casino, when it was a, a European-style casino as opposed to a Vegas-style casino that it is now. Mm. Um, but I looked after uh, food and beverage uh, promotions, uh, high rollers, uh, gaming machine promotions, all of that sort of thing. But, and it but was you a lot added, of fun. But you added a show business flair to it all. Yes. Mm. And people like yourself, um, I had I booked along the way to come and compare a lot of the things that we did at the casino. Mm. And um, they were very, very successful. They were very interesting days and they were quite inventive. So many of the things were very inventive. Well, at the time, there wasn't uh, pokies in clubs uh, in yeah. Adelaide. And so we had to, you know, invent ways that we would attract people and, you know, ways that we would entertain people and, and give people a good time. But talking of giving people a good time, we've got some photographs here of stuff you've done in your life because after you left the casino, you went... Pfft. Oh, wow, you've done your research. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, um, there's so many here. Let's talk them through quickly. OK, well, that's, a, that's an event um, at the casino when I was there, um, which was opening up the new Grange room, which was a new high roller room. That's actually staged in uh, the Hyatt Ballroom, which was next door. Yes, we did quite a few things This there. is a James Bond event uh, that we did uh, for uh, high rollers that was actually in one of the... Uh, well, in the Grange room, in the high roller room at the casino. That's another shot of the same thing. I know who that fellow is. Yeah, he was a model here in Adelaide yes. for a long time. 
Don Contouris is his name. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Um, we still have that cat in our props collection. <laughs> that's being straight there. And um, we used to do all of it. Like an event producer does everything for the event, including doing costumes and everything for the staff. You can see those old analogue TVs in the background, so you can see how long ago that yes, was. Yes, isn't that amazing? We've forgotten what 3 by 4 used to be. This was an event that I did with a, uh, the late Peter Hassel up in Cairns for uh, an intimate dinner. Looks fabulous. It does look. This is an Australian uh, event. A lot of plants in there. Holden Carr. Any meat pies? Uh, well, no, there wasn't on the menu, I don't think. Okay. And this was actually the reproduction of a painting uh, that Alison Mitchell, who's a body artist here in Adelaide, did for that event. Mm, amazing work. This is an interesting event. This was for an electrical company for 800 people at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre, and they wanted a Gothic-themed circus. So... Um, Oh, it sorry, had some nudity that. in it, which we won't show here. Not you, I hope. No, 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 it wasn't okay. myself. These are aerialists, the two that are up in the sky that we bought from Hungary. That's the two there. Catalan and Vatalan <laughs> were their names. Um, as you can see, we had a little uh, character there that was part of it. The guy at the top there is a juggler. This was, um, yeah, a very promiscuous scene that was on stage that was actually asked for by the client. Well, that's the thing. A client asks you for specifics. You've got to come up with something that looks good. Exactly. That's Jonathan Freeman, a juggler from here in Australia. And this is Dimitri Kalanen, who um, I ended up managing uh, for quite some time. He's a, a Russian triple gold medalist in gymnastics. Oh, brilliant. And he flied in the airspace during that event. This uh, is an event I did in Cairns. Outdoor event. Yes, don't palms look great when they're underlit? They do, don't they? And then this is just the natural white light of sunshine. Oh, hopefully no sand in the... Um, Bazardo's Winery engaged me at one stage to do a fashion parade for them, which was wonderful. Oh, and that's me. It is. <laughs> and That's winning um, the uh, Australian Event Awards for Best Achievement in Entertainment. Which... And how many times have you won that? Twice. Yeah. It's a quite just, impressive just being, trophy, isn't just it? Just being humble with all. <laughs> <laughs> How many times you won that? Twice. Yeah. Twice. Shane, it's difficult though, isn't it? Because not only have you got to come up with the ideas, you've got to find the people to make the things happen. How have you managed to do that? Well, we have auditions, obviously. Um, and event producing or entertainment producing, I think, is all about, as you know, is about having good people around you. Mm. So it's about you know, having a great team that can do hair and makeup, a great team that can create costumes, a great team that can choreograph, you know, a, a great series of dancers that you can you know, really extract their skills out of them depending on what form of dance they came from. And um, what the client wants, I exactly. guess, at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. And just you know, following the brief of what they want and putting it all together. But this has changed recently, hasn't it? Because COVID sort of was a bit of a death knoll to a lot of the bigger events that used to occur. Yeah, we still have the state events, you know, that happen quite often here in South Australia, you know, the footy events and, and tour down under and all of those sort of things. But the corporate events of, you know, corporate companies who are having, you know, end of year celebrations or mm. award ceremonies or all of those sort of things, they've dried up quite dramatically um, since COVID. But that's where you could be really creative. That's, you know, that doesn't necessarily happen with the outdoor events. It's much harder. Yes. Because when you're in a confined space, you can light it, you can make everything sort of magic. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. Is that where you thought you were going to go when you were younger? No, I wanted to go into advertising, but I didn't really know what advertising was. Okay. <laughs> um, a quick little story, if we've got time, um, is that um, I was... No, I'm sorry, you're out of time now. Oh, are we? Yeah, okay. no. I was inspired by the television program Bewitched. Oh, okay. And Darren, oh, he was the an husband, advertising. yeah, who was Executive. in advertising. And I remember seeing an episode <laughs> where he created tooth paint for kids to paint onto their teeth from a palette um, to encourage them to clean their teeth. And I thought, that's an amazing idea. I want to work in the industry where you can just <laughs> be creative and do all of those things. And I kind of fell into advertising and then event producing. That, I, I do actually remember that <laughs> program. You probably the remember that that I episode. actually remembered, yes, that he was an ag advertising executive. Yeah. Isn't it amazing, though, how early television... I don't know that it's... It, 
well, kids aren't watching TV anymore, but early television was such an influence on the way we approached, I guess, our life as we grew up. Yeah. And I think that early television like, had good morals in it too and mm. good uh, episodes that promoted being grounded. Mm. And I think... Uh, and working to achieve something yes. in life. Yeah. Well, speaking of working to achieve, we've got to take a short break and we'll be back with some wonderful footage in just a tick. Welcome back. Our special guest is Shane Wilson, producer of extraordinary shows here in South Australia and all around the world. That's fair to say. It is. What about in the UK? Have you done anything in the UK? No, not the UK, unfortunately. Okay. I'd like to. Yeah, well, you never know. Exactly. You never know who's watching this program. Yeah, but there's somewhere out there who wants an event and, producer. Well, exactly, because everyone can watch this now on CTV+. Plus. Exactly. Now, uh, we were talking before briefly about the... At Royal Adelaide show, mm -hmm. how long have you been producing the dance shows there? The, the song and dance shows on the indoor goiter stage. Since oh, yes. Oh, but you've done stuff before that. We're going to show that a bit later. Let's talk about the goiter stage. Yeah, so the goiter stage since 2014. Right. Um, the first one was for their uh, birthday celebrations that they had, and I've forgotten the year that it was. So 175th. That's okay. right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Now, um, we're going, to, we're going to show you uh, some action. We'll keep talking about it, but we're going to show you down there some of the action that you would have seen at last year's Royal Adelaide show. And we've just put them down there so that... Uh, because it's a very long, narrow stage, isn't mm. it? How many dancers were in the production show? We had 20 in total, plus three specialty performers who were our acrobats aerialists as well. And we've had that kind of ratio for the whole number of years that we've been doing this indoor stage. Right. Now, this show had a particular theme. It was lights, camera, action? Was lights, that camera, correct? action, yeah. But you've done other shows which have had different names? Yeah, since 2014, we've had a different show every year. Mm -hmm. um, and Do you remember the names of any? Because <laughs> that's... The... Tinker Taylor Fashion Maker was the first oh, one. Okay. Oh, uh, on. okay. The Magical Gift of Mother Earth was the second. Uh, postcards from Around the World... Uh, oh, I lights, saw that. camera, action. That one I've seen. Um, I am ending up forgetting now. Yeah. That'll do, that'll <laughs> do. But the idea of the shows, are, well, this being lights, camera, action, you took a whole lot of different um, genres. genres of movies. Yeah, movie genres. So what we're seeing at the moment is like space movies or um, and... Uh, this here is uh, yes, children's right. movies. So okay. we did an underwater, underwater theme for that theme, one. Yep. Um, some great costumes there, originally designed by Yvonne Kuhn, who's our head costumer. Uh, this was... Uh, it's superheroes. I don't think it was action. It was superheroes. Yes, yes, you're correct. Yeah. See, I know. I put this together. <laughs> we had to be very careful there to have superheroes that weren't copyrighted. So yes. we created all of our own in there. Yes. Well, they look great. Yeah, they do. They really look great. We audition but... all of these dancers and... Um, we try to have as many from South Australia as we possibly can. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of guy dancers here that can do this type of professional work. They're up and coming, uh, so sometimes we've mm. had to get a couple from interstate, but predominantly we've tried to keep it all South Australian. Well, that, yes, and, and I mean, that's one of the odd things. Of course, I've had the men who dance on the show quite yes. often. And, um, you know, finding boys that are well-trained like this is Charlie who's been on the show a few times with a lovely part of her. Yes. He uh, is uh, balletically trained, as you know, mm. and so he was a wonderful choice to uh, pair with this lovely girl to do this particular one. And this was uh, romance movies. Right. I mean, the, the thing is, every show, the, how many seats are in front of the stage? 500. Yeah, and they're always full. Completely. And this comes with your show ticket. It does. So, so it's free. It's, yeah. a, it's an added bonus of coming to the show. Yeah. So having these sorts of things in something like a Royal Adelaide show is so beneficial to the public because they actually get to see an art form in a way that's almost been forgotten, but they see it live. That's right. And that's the difference. We see it on screens, but we don't always see this live. And I've got to tell you one like really happy story was there was a lady who came up to me last year, it would have been during this production, 
and she had three young children and she um, was unable financially to ever uh, take them to a theatre production. And she came up to me and said, I just wanted to let you know that this is the first theatre show that my children have ever seen. And even though it only goes for 30 minutes, mm. it's interesting to note that things like this, which are free that you can go to, mm. are introducing young kids to theatre. Oh, absolutely. In those families where they can't afford maybe to buy a ticket to a show. But, but you know, it's not all about showground things or demonstrations on an oval. No. It's about things like this that really make you want to go to the show. Yeah. Very valuable, I think, and great that you've been doing it for so long and so well. Thank you. Um, and the thing I should mention is, uh, again, we're only looking at that thin strip, but the lighting that's used for the show, all of the background animation stuff, it's a major, major concern. It must cost a fortune. Well, it costs a fair bit to put on, but, you know, you, you want to do it right. Yeah. And, you know, you want to give these dancers on the stage, you know, they get to perform for nine days plus. Uh, they learn it in only five days. Yep. And, you want to and they're all them... professional dancers. That's yes. the other thing that's worth mentioning. Yes, and they come from all different walks of life uh, here in South Australia, and as I said, a couple from in-state. But um, you want to give them a good quality show to be involved mm. with. Mm. Uh, you mentioned the graphics in the background. That's done by a gentleman called uh, Matt uh, Roberts here in South Australia. So even those are all produced here. No, it's a visual experience that you'd walk away really walking on air. Yeah, well, we hope to achieve well, exactly that. That's really the feeling. Yes. Because, uh, because you're using all the technical stuff that's, that's there to, to use, which yes. makes a big difference. Um, Shane, again, you're producing something that's coming up this year. Tell us about that, because it's different, a bit different. Well, it's a little bit different. Uh, what we're doing this year, it's called Icons of Music, mm -hmm. and we're basically um, having a journey through one piece of music from different icons that have lived. So um, some are still alive now, obviously. Um. They're not all dead. Um, but we've got, you know, a song from John Lennon. We've got a song from Elvis, a song from Madonna, a song from Cher. Uh, we'll have all live singing on stage. Oh, great. Plus the dancers and some aerialists performing to it as well. Great. Just hold that thought for one tick. I will. But there's more because you started doing the shows at the showground on an outdoor stage. This I one. Did. Yes, that one. That's uh, in the middle of the boulevard. We did an outdoor stage that was uh, in 2000, I think, and one, 2001. Right. Uh, but, and this is just a bigger shot of the show we were just... That's the uh, indoor gorgeous stage, yeah. Yeah, so you can see how, how big it is with audience sitting in the front from yeah, what we were talking audience. about. That's actually postcards from around the world. That's right. That's the finale for it. But you've done other stuff as well. Yeah, this is a, a fashion parade that I did for Bazado Winery. Oh, I see Great the event thing, that was. Yes. That was a ladies' luncheon. Right. Oh, and this is Courtney Act. Uh, being carried by some models and dancers that was up at uh, Hamilton Island. That was a fun Caribbean event. This is the Royal Adelaide Show Jesters that we had a while back because I really started doing the Royal Adelaide Show with providing roving entertainment in mm -hmm. um, 1998. It's just interesting seeing, you know, the colour in these things, and this is obviously what shows need, but you actually need professional performers doing all of that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so what is there still to conquer? Well, um, I mentioned Dimitri Kalanen, that aerialist who had the red fabric mm -hmm. in one of those shots there, uh, who was the triple gold medalist from Russia. I, uh, in the middle of the 2000s, I used to put entertainment on Royal Caribbean ships. So I've just initiated that again. So not p and though, please. No, not p and Royal Caribbean. <laughs> Um, originally, it was specialty acts for their ice show mm -hmm. uh, in some of the classes of their um, ships, but I've been in contact with them recently and hope, hopefully we're doing that again. Because you've got buckets and buckets of costumes. We have. And look, I know how hard this is because I used to have the same and unfortunately a lot of them ended up in the dump. And what's sad about that is the amount of work that's gone into exactly. these things. Yep. And you store them and you keep them because you think, oh, I'll use that again. Oh, maybe I can use that again. 
how are you coping with that? Where do you keep everything? There's a warehouse with everything in it, all nicely wrapped up and, and, uh, and catalogued. Uh, there's a lot of costumes that have been there, but you're right, they do take a lot of time. A lot of artisans have worked on them mm. uh, for, you know, so many hours. And so we're going through a recycle process at the moment to take some of those performances that we had at the Royal Adelaide show and looking at putting them in casinos and also on ships as well. Mm -hmm. So that's our direction that's going to be happening over the next couple of years. And that's good because we get to recycle everything. Well, know. we need to. Yeah. We need to. And also, it's like pieces of art that you'd hang on the wall, costumes. Uh, many costumes are really so specific but so fantastic. It, how do you throw them away? Well, it's very difficult. And when you know how much time has been spent on them yeah. and also, you know, backstage during those shows... We have dresses that are there. We have people who are looking after them. and Because the changes are so fast. Very you fast. Know, it's here. Undress me quick and put the other one on. Exactly. I we know have that a, only two. We have a team of wonderful dressers who are backstage <laughs> who do all of that all the time. Amazing. Yeah. Well, it, we've just got to take one more break and we'll be back in a tick. Our special guest on this episode of Our Time has been extraordinary producer of amazing shows and events, Shane Wilson. Shane, what do you want to do when you grow up? Oh, I don't know. Do something sensible. Keep playing? Like, be an adult. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but keep playing is a good thing. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think all of us sort of hope we can keep working as long as it's possible. Yeah. And, you know, being able to be innovative and new ideas and, and also work with, work with younger people with fresh thoughts about entertainment and, you know, doing stuff for themselves. I think, um, you know, giving, giving young performers an opportunity to be able to perform. Mm. Um, we don't have very many producers in Australia no. that are producing live no, frightening. stuff. And so I think we need more of them. And we need more of them, you know, to engage the talent that's out there. Well, we get a lot of the big American shows or, right. or English shows, but we don't so much have that homegrown thing happening. I mean, no. Priscilla was probably one of the, the better and more modern stage shows, yes. but obviously based on a film initially. Mm. So, you know, to find a bit more homegrown stuff would be good. Mm. And I think also that... There are a lot of artisans out there too. There's a lot of people working behind the camera or there's a lot of people working backstage that uh, don't have shows that they can do, mm. that uh, shows need to be created for that side of well, yes, the performance because, as well. Well, how many are here? One, two, three, four, five. There's five on the floor. We've got one, two, three, four, another four up there. There's nine people making this happen. Mm. And it's, you know, it's important that those skills be passed on because, mm. you know, I think if we go back a long time in performance, you know, vaudeville skills have gone. Mm. You know, there used to be vaudeville stuff a long time ago. I know you used to be involved in that. I was just lucky to come in at the end of that. Yeah. And, and that's been terrific. And, yeah. you know, you've been in television and you've been in all sorts of... It's, it's, it's amazing, actually, how, you know, how your life takes you and to embrace the opportunities that you have. Yeah. But I've been just very lucky for a long time. I started when I was 14 in television. I bet you've got I've some stories to tell about ever it. Ever since, yes. Well, I've written a book, as you know. Yes. I'm just finishing putting photos of screenshots in of different stuff. So uh. one day soon. But this is actually, I'm glad you could do this show because this is actually our 599th show. Congratulations. And next time it will be our 600th show. That's wonderful. So we've got something special coming up for that. And you've been doing it for, what, 10 years? 13. 13 but years. But who's counting? Oh, OK. Listen, it's time for us to say goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank it's been you're, lovely you're talking. You're more than welcome. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Till next time, thank you for your company. Keep yourself nice until we see you again for 600. <laughs> <laughs>